This is Math 152. We're going to take a look at section 4.10 right now. And this section should feel like a little bit of review for you because we're just going to talk about antiderivatives, uh, just the idea of them. So basically, a uh, function, we'll call it capital F, is the antiderivative of F if the derivative of capital F is F. So in other words, um, this direction is deriving this direction is, we'll call it anti-deriving. So let's start with some function. Uh, we'll just say f of x, let's just call it 2x. So our function is, <laughs> sorry, is 2x. And so what we want to do is now take the anti-derivative of it. In other words, um, where would it have come from? What would we have taken the derivative of and gotten 2x? So that antiderivative, and you know, that's when you could probably piece together, figure out it's going to be some something with an x squared in it. Because if I take the derivative of x squared, I know I can do that power rule, two x, and now it's two, it's x squared, but uh, it could be x squared plus three, right? Take the derivative of that. That's two x plus a constant. Uh, or it could be x squared plus 5, or it could be x squared minus 7. Um, this constant part, it, it could be an infinite number of things. So the, what we're going to write is x squared plus c, plus some constant. It's kind of a family uh, that it could be. So the answer derivative is that x squared plus some constant. If you think about that, f of x has a certain shape, right? x squared. Uh, its derivative, 2x, talks about one way to think about that is the, the steepness is along the way, right? So it's like, it has a steepness of zero here. So it's that two X, there's our, there's our derivative um, of bigger F. And now this shape though, right here of this, it doesn't matter where we put that. Like we can move it up, move it down. It's the, it doesn't change the steepness at all, where the steepness has happened. So that plus C is letting us think about how this could really be anywhere because all we're all we're all we care about all it's, the only information it's giving us is the steepness of the function so these uh these type of, of integrals uh antiderivatives are also called integrals are indefinite in other words we're we're not really sure about all of the details about them indefinite we've got that plus c so that's and there's no way for us to pin it down without more information so let's think about some things that we know and uh, and try a couple of these. So if you're up for it, why don't you uh, take a minute and pause the video and give these a try and see uh, see if you can find those antiderivatives. Be a nice little nice little review for you. All right, so uh, let me get these answers up here. Okay, so there they are. Uh, hopefully, you remembered to write the plus C part, right? Another notation that I could have used to, uh, to do these, like when I said, here's the function, find the antiderivative. And again, I think you've, you've probably seen this notation before. Use that big summa uh, symbol. That is our integral symbol and uh, dx. So we have a couple of, of pieces here. We have uh, find it of this function relative to x. This is the same as asking what's the antiderivative of that function. That's our shorthand for it. So instead of writing out the function, writing out an antiderivative, we can say find the integral of it. And uh, like you know, that one was... Uh, plus that c. Don't forget to add that constant each time. So as we have these functions like this, find the integral of the function f relative to x, our answer is going to be the antiderivative plus some constant. We're finding those indefinite, um, indefinite integrals. So a couple things to think about. Uh, we have a power rule that kind of undoes our power rule for, um, for integrating. I'm sorry, for differentiating. And I'll just write this out. 
So that, notice that undoes our power rule for taking the derivative. In other words, if I'm taking the derivative uh, of x cubed, let's say on that, you know, I'm used to saying, oh, it's 3, that comes down, and then this decreases by 1. And then what this does is this goes the opposite direction. This takes this, it divides out that, and by that I'm talking about that 3 there, it divides out that part, and it increases this by 1. So we'd be taking this, our n would be a 2, we're dividing out the 3, n plus 1, and, and increasing that by 1, which gives us the x to the third. So there's our power rule for, uh, for integrating. A couple other things I want to remind you of. You might have not remembered this one. Uh, 1 over x comes from natural log, and it's natural log of the absolute value of x just to keep that positive. Uh, so we're not trying to take natural log of a negative number. And hopefully you also remember that e is its own derivative, uh, e to the x. So those are all good things to, uh, to think about. Uh, there's a bunch of other relationships, too, that you might want to refresh yourself with. And if you look in your textbook, and actually this is like the volume one textbook, uh, look back in it, and there is, in this 4.10 section, there's a big bunch of, there we go, it's a big table that just has some, some formulas for you. Some things to remember, you know, those trig ones, um, those inverse trig ones. So notice, like, if I have something like 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared, I can look it up and go, oh, yeah, that's uh, inverse sine, right? Uh, those are just ones to uh, to remember. 1 over 1 plus x squared, that's um, inverse tangent, and so on. Uh, look in the book. Make sure you jot those down. Refresh refresh yourself with those. Um, great. So a couple things you can think about is uh, just the, the simple act of verifying. So, like, if I had a statement that told me something like, this and I was asked to verify that this is a true statement uh, notice this direction is integrating that's the integration so if I want to verify what I could do is just take the derivative of this and uh, see that it becomes that all right so let's think about this uh, derivative relative to x let's see the derivative of x squared over 2 that would be uh, 2x over 2, which is x. Derivative of e to the x is itself. Derivative of a constant is 0. So, yeah, there's how I could verify. And then if it ended up not being equivalent to it, I would say, nope, they're, they're not. So another thing I want to think about with uh, integrating is if I have addition going on inside, um, essentially I could just integrate the pieces. I can break this into, this would be the same as, you know, that part plus that part. And it's same with subtraction too. So if this is subtraction in here, I can break out that subtraction. Uh, and then if I just have some constant in here, some number, uh, I, can, I can basically say, I can also just take it out and go, whatever that derivative I'm sorry, whatever that integral ends up being times the constant is the same. I can carry it inside or I can push it out just to make things a little bit easier for myself. Um, okay, so those are good, hopefully familiar. Uh, let me throw three uh, integrals up here that I want you to do, and then I'm going to talk about one more thing. All right, so there they are. And uh, give these a go. And I really strongly suggest that you do that. Pause the video and I give these a try. I'll wait. All right, welcome back. So uh, on this first one, hopefully um, you could think about how I have addition subtraction in here. So I could do each of these pieces individually. I mean, technically I could write it out, right? Like interval of this dx minus interval of that dx. I'm just gonna do it. So five x cubed, let me think about that. That would have had to have come from um, an x to the fourth, right? So that's the five. 
and then I'm going to divide by that four. That is taking advantage of that that power rule relationship right there. Whoops, sorry, <laughs> that power rule relationship right there. Minus, uh, same idea here. I've still got that seven hanging out. This would have come from an x cubed, and I need to divide it out. Uh, this is a one up here, so this would be squared. And this is basically a 4x to the 0. Think of it that way. So it would be plus 4x. And if you stop there, you forgot one thing. These are indefinite plus some constant, right? Because it can move up and down, and this slope won't change it. All right, on this next one, thinking about this next one, um, these are both divided by that x. If you can simplify this, let's simplify it and, and see what we can do. So x squared divided by x is just x plus 4. Uh, the third root of x, the third root of x is the same as x to the one-third power. And that's divided by x. That's x to the first. So I basically have uh, x to the one-third divided by x to the first, which is x to the negative two-thirds. And if you wanted to write that as 4 over x to the 2 thirds, go for it. So again, we just simplified that. Boop, boop, first thing. And then now, let's uh, do these derivatives. So x, that's like x to the first. So this would be uh, x squared over 2. Plus, I've still got that 4. Um, this is negative 2 thirds. So if I increase that by 1, it's 1 third divided by that one third, um, and that's plus c. And if I clean this up a little bit, I've got s squared over two, plus divided by a third, it's the same as multiplying by three, right? Take the reciprocal and multiply. So 12 x to the one third plus some constant. And if you want, you could write this as 12 uh, third, whoops, sorry, third root of x. All right, and then on this last one, this one is a little bit of a bear. Uh, well, I have this constant in here, this 4. So how about um, I think of this as like 4 times that. So I can just bring the 4 out of there. Just bring it out of there. That was so mathy. x squared uh, dx. And if you get stuck, you know, you have some fraction, you get stuck. Go back and look up um, from that table that I referred to earlier. And you'll see that this is inverse tangent. So this would be arctan, and remember, plus some constant. All right. Oh, there's one more I wanted to do, too. I'll just do it. That looks like a bear. Uh, if you want to pause real quick and do it yourself, do it. Um, but what I want you to notice is if you can simplify stuff, simplify it first. Tangent is sine over cosine. So this is the same as sine over cosine times cosine and notice that cosine divided by cosine is one so this is the same as that and then from there you should be able to see that it's negative cosine plus some constant all right there's one last idea i want to talk about and that is um i've made a big deal about adding the c that these are indent indefinite if we have a little bit more information, we can actually nail down what that c is. So if I told you I had some function um, and the derivative of it is 6x squared. And then if I evaluate it at 1, I get an answer of 5. Right? This is saying when x is 1, y is 5. So first off, let's see what the, and the question is, what's the function? What is the, the function that would yield this? So first off, let's do this. And let's see, x squared would have come from x cubed divided by 3. So this is the same as uh, 2x cubed plus c. So, so far we know that if the derivative of x, uh, if the derivative was 6x squared, the original function would have been uh, 2x cubed plus something. And then this allows us to nail down the something. We're given some initial conditions, uh, some initial values. So this is telling us when x is 1, y would be 5. So let's substitute those in. y is 5, x is 1. So 5 would 
be two times one is one. So C would be three. So the original function would be two X cubed plus three. All right, I hope that was a decent review for you. Um, take some time, look at the questions that um, I've asked you to, to do out of the textbook. Remember, we are looking at the, the Calc 1 book, uh, the volume one, just for this unit, just for this refresher. Give those problems a try, uh, message me or post any questions that you have. All right, good luck.